So if you own a Tesla, it is likely that you received an email from Tesla saying you have one month free of full self-driving. So what does that mean? Now, if you've never used full self-driving before or often referred to as FSD, I'm gonna tell you everything that you need to know in order to maximize this one month that you have so you can make the best informed decision on whether or not FSD is right for you. So stick around to the very end to make sure that you don't miss out on a step that will be incredibly important for you to maximize your FSD experience. So with that, let's just jump right into it. Now, if you're not sure how to actually get started, the very first thing that you need to do is make sure that FSD is enabled on your car. And you can do that by tapping the car icon, selecting autopilot, and you will see a new option up here saying full self-driving supervised. It is no longer beta anymore. It is supervised, which means exactly what it says. The car will drive itself but you need to be aware of what's going on and be ready to take over at any time. So let's go ahead and get that enabled. So we're gonna go ahead and just select this and it's gonna come up with some boilerplate here to just make sure that you are fully aware of what you're doing and that you need to pay attention and be ready to take full control. So we're gonna say yes, we're gonna enable that. We're gonna go ahead and enable full self-driving supervised and it's turned on. The next thing that you're gonna to wanna to do is you're gonna to want to look at your settings here. Um, whether or not you feel that you want FSD to be kind of easy going in what its decision-making process or assertive. It all just comes down to your driving style. And for me, I'm just gonna leave it set at average. The next thing you're gonna to wanna to look at is something called automatic set speed offset. Now, what is that? Automatic set speed offset is a feature that allows the car to choose what the best speed is for you to drive. And I've got a whole video on that that I will link to right up here if you wanna learn about that feature specifically and what it does and what it doesn't do. So for now, we're gonna go ahead and leave that turned on. And if yours isn't turned on, go ahead and turn it on. Now, before we actually go on our first drive, let me tell you what FSD supervised can and can't do. Basically, it can do just about everything. It will drive and make right-hand turns, left-hand turns, follow stop signs, look at lights, take you to your destination. It will get you from about 50 feet from your starting point to about 50 to 100 feet to your ending point. And it should, and I say should because it doesn't always do it, it should make the right choices and 100% drive every aspect of your car between where you're starting and where you're ending. From the gas pedal, to the brake pedal, to steering, to signaling, to absolutely everything. If everything goes right, and I say if, that's what it should do. Now, FSD is also good for the highway. And if you have autopilot, you know with autopilot, it will hold you in your lane. But with FSD, it will take that to the next level. You will actually allow the car to make lane changes for you. And that's something that can be enabled with the enhanced autopilot if you have it. But it will also get on and get off of the interstate or highway system and transition over to an in-town driving mode. So whether your route takes you to the interstate or not, it absolutely doesn't matter. FSD should, and I say should again, get you from point A to point B by doing absolutely everything. Now let me talk about what FSD just flat out can't do or can't do very well. The first thing you need to know is FSD cannot back up in any way, shape, or form. The car will not back up. So if you're in a situation where you need to back up, you're going to have to do that manually. And I said earlier, it doesn't take you entirely from point A to point B. You're going to likely find that you're going to have to drive yourself the last 100 feet or so in either direction. Also, parking lots are a little hit and miss right now. Now, there's a cool auto park feature, which a lot of people have covered. My car doesn't have it. But with the auto park, it allows you to very easily park in a parking spot. And that's part of FSD if you have a vision-enabled car, but I do not. But with that Make sure you pay particular care if you're in a parking lot that is especially busy because it may not make all the right choices. Another thing that I wanna point out is poor weather. FSD is designed to work incredibly well when it is nice and sunny like it is right now. In poor weather, whether it be rain or snow or hail or sleet, it can struggle sometimes and you need to be very careful about using FSD in those conditions. Now the car will warn you and say that FSD is degraded when it doesn't think it can do the best job. So use your best judgment. And I recommend if you're new to FSD and it's poor weather outside, you probably shouldn't let that be your first drive. But if you're a seasoned pro and you feel that you've got the hang of it, give it a try because you're gonna get a sense of where it does well and where it doesn't. 
Another rough spot of FSD, in my opinion, is getting on and off highways. Now, getting on highways, it doesn't merge as quickly or as proactively as it should, and getting off is kind of like watching somebody step on an escalator for the very first times in their lives. It gets the job done, but it isn't very graceful. And finally, you need to be prepared because FSD is almost magical most of the time. It is incredibly brilliant. It is a genius until it is absolutely dumb. Sometimes it will do just something random and completely dumb and you don't understand why it's doing it and you need to be ready to take over at any time. And I'll get into that in a second. But I will say with the latest version that you have, version 12.3.3 most likely, that FSD, those crazy weird edge cases, they are going down and down and down and down and you rarely see them anymore like you did with previous versions. And this is why Tesla and Elon Musk decided to let everybody have a full month of it for free. Now also before we get started, let me tell you about how the car monitors if you're paying attention or not, because paying attention is a critical part of FSD supervised, and it does that in a couple of ways. The first one is right up here. It is a camera, an inside cabin camera, and it is watching you, and it is watching what you're doing. It's watching if you're looking at the road, it's watching whether or not you're looking at your screen too long, and it is certainly watching whether or not you pick up and look at your phone. Its algorithms have really dialed in and some have argued a little too much, if you're not really paying attention to the road, you're gonna get flashed the dreaded pay attention logo, signage, and sound. Also while you're driving, just like with autopilot, you're going to have to tell it that you're there by putting constant pressure on the wheel in either direction. Um, this is exactly the same as autopilot. If you're used to autopilot, you just need to tell the car, hey, I'm here, and it's looking at you, the camera, and it's making sure that you're paying attention. So with those two things, you should be ready to go. Okay, now the fun part, let's actually go for a drive. And in order to do that, you need to enter in a destination, just like any other navigation, and I've already done that. The next thing you wanna do is put your car into drive. And the thing you wanna watch out for is when you start moving, you're gonna look for this autopilot steering wheel icon on the top of your screen. That will tell you that you can enable autopilot. So let's just go ahead and do that by pulling down on the stock one time because you don't have the option for two, but we're gonna do one time and we are going. And we are hands-free at this point. It's gonna stop here. It's saying that we're gonna make a right-hand turn, which it is doing. You can see that it's controlling the steering wheel. It's doing everything that it needs to do. We have another stop here. Again, it's looking at the stop sign. It's turning on the turn signal, it's inching forward to make sure that it can see, and it's making that left-hand turn. And it's doing all of the things that you would do as a human being driving the car. I am not touching anything. I am just sitting here at, as a passenger at this point, ready to take over. So why don't we talk about taking over? Because there are a couple ways for you to take over this car if you need to. First one, is simply just lift up on the right stock and that will disengage FSD and you're driving manually. Let's go ahead and re-enable. The next thing that you can do is simply just grab the wheel. You grab the wheel, you see a little bit of resistance and you're in control. And the last thing to take over FSD at any time is just tap the brake pedal and you are again in control. So we are driving and the car is driving, we're at a four-way stop. Another thing that you're gonna notice is that your visualizations may have changed. You're gonna see a lot more visualizations that you're probably not used to if you're only using autopilot. It sees and senses everything around it. All of the images that you are seeing on the screen are completely generated in real time by the camera systems. It's not using the built-in navigation for any of the visualizations. The other thing that you wanna pay particular attention to is the blue stripe. The blue stripe tells you a lot about what it's thinking. It's showing you the general path of where it, you are going to go and what its next move is going to be. There's even some lines on the screen that give you an indication of whether it's going to be accelerating or it's going to be decelerating. Now here we have to make a left-hand turn and you can see that it motioned that we are going to do a left-hand turn. We have a stoplight, it stopped, it stopped right at the line, it's doing everything that it needed to do. 
Now, if you find that this video doesn't answer all your questions and you want to see more situations that I haven't showed you yet, make sure you check out my channel where I have a whole bunch of FSD videos from various types of versions and you want to see the progression from where I started to where I ended, great. But if you want to just look at the last few videos that I put out that show you just how well this thing works in different situations, roundabouts, poor weather, general driving, that will give you the detail you need. We have a green arrow. Let's go ahead and get the turn. This version is buttery smooth. That was super smooth. We have a car that's pulling out here. What's it going to do? It's going to go ahead and move forward because it wasn't sure what was going on. It is reacting to the traffic just like a human being. Now we're coming up to one of its first big tests, which is a roundabout. This is a relatively large roundabout, and we're going to be going straight through it. Again, be ready to take over, but I am not driving. And just like that, it handles the roundabout absolutely perfectly. And by my estimation, better than a lot of human beings know how to handle roundabouts. Let's give it another challenge. This is another roundabout. Let's see how it does. Again, it's giving you an indication. You'll see the visualization on the screen of the entire roundabout does a really good job of seeing its surroundings. And there you go. We're going to be making a right hand turn here. We have a stoplight. It does see the stoplight. Now what you need to know if you're new to FSD is that they haven't told this car really exactly, exactly how to drive. They haven't said, here's a roundabout. Here's a stop sign. Here's a speed bump. It learns now very much like a human being would learn where it uses all of the driving data that have been sent back to Tesla, and it figures out through its AI or its neural networks what human beings do and what's the right thing to do in the right condition, and it actually does it. And that's a big change in the version that you're driving right now compared to past versions where a lot of things were hard-coded. And real life driving all around the world is very different than what it is in California. And if you try to use programming to match up and program or hard program in what the car needs to do in every situation, then we're just bound to lose. So using a neural network seems to be a big step forward in my opinion. Now before we wrap this video up, let's talk about how much FSD costs because you're getting it for free for a month and after your month is over, Tesla's going to ask you to pay for it. Now, if you don't have it now, your option for payment is basically a subscription. And when you're subscribing to FSD, right now, as of this video, it costs about $200 a month. Yeah, that's quite a bit of change. So you need to decide, is this right for you? Now, you can enable FSD on a month-to-month -month basis. You don't have to make a long-term commitment. So when using FSD on a trip, a road trip, a vacation, go ahead and subscribe when you're done with that vacation turn it off if you so choose. Now, when you're buying a brand new car, you still have the option of ordering FSD when you buy the car, buying it outright. Now, right now, the price tag for FSD when you buy it outright is $12,000 from Tesla on top of the cost of your car. And that's a lot of money. Now, when I bought this car three and a half years ago, it was $8,000 and that was a lot. But for me, I'm into technology. I wanted to see the bleeding edge. I wanted to participate in this full self-driving revolution. I knew what I was getting into. But is it worth 12,000 or 15,000 like it was done in the past? Well, I would have said no. Um, but you're gonna have to make that choice on your own because this version is getting darn, darn good. Okay, that's about it. That's about all you need to know to give FSD a good shot on your own. And I highly recommend that if you have this available to you, give it a try. Really give it a try. If you're not comfortable with certain roads, start out in some residential areas, start out in a park, start out wherever you feel comfortable, but give it a try because in my opinion, FSD is something that you need to experience. But if you also don't have a Tesla, you may have a friend with a Tesla that has it ask them for a ride. And if you don't have a friend, find your local Tesla showroom or service center that are giving out demo drives. And they are, as of right now, in April 2024, giving out free FSD demo drives to anybody that wants it. 
So hopefully you enjoyed this quick video. If you did, I'd appreciate you tapping that like button. And if you're new to this channel, subscriptions are always welcome. And if you're looking to pick up a Tesla of your own, and I would highly recommend it, make sure you use a referral link because right now Tesla is giving three months of free full self-driving if you use a referral link. Use any referral link you want, but if you want to use the one below, that would be great. Thank you so much for watching and we'll catch you on the next video.